Today's video is brought to you by Uncle Rob's Magic Solder Flux. Guaranteed to work. Guaranteed to work. We don't know what's in it. Unicorn horns, excrement of a griffin. Hard to say, but it works. If you want it, you got to email Uncle Rob. He'll tell you what, he, what to do to get it. Thanks, Uncle Rob. Hey, what's happening, guys? I am back in the studio, in the shop, whatever you want to call it today. Recovering from my surgery. Everything seems to be going well. So, what we're going to take a look at today is this Sunloo filament dryer. 3D printing mate. You can use it to dry your filament before you print, or you can print from inside the box with dry filament, which is, I'm finding out, very important. Most of the filaments we print with are hydroscopic, which means they attract water, and that's not a good thing. So the 3D printing mate, the Fill Dryer S1 from uh, Sunlu, lists for about $49 on Amazon. And you can see the size here, 271 by 100 by 237 max coil size, diameter of 210. Less than 90% humidity, you get up to 55 degrees C, input power is 100 to 240, 50 to 60 hertz output power, 24 volts, 2 amps, standby power, wow, 5 milliwatts, that's not bad, 1.8 amps max, max working power, 48 watts, and it has an LED screen, or LCD screen, and here is a code you can scan if you'd like to see some more information about this. Now, I did not buy this, and this was not sent by a company. This was sent by my good friend, Uncle Rob, to check out. Uncle Rob is my 3D printing rabbi. He tells me what's up, what I need to do, and we go from there. So, nothing else in the box. We've got a screen here, a couple buttons which I can't read anything on, so let's open this up and take off these pieces of tape they got stuck on here for packing, holding everything together. I'm not sure why that little weird square piece of tape is there, but okay. Oh, there's another hole. Interesting. I guess that is for wherever you decide to uh, run your filament out. Power supply, 24 volts, 2 amps. Thank you for your purchase. little bung that I suspect goes in there like that. I had really expected to find some roller bearings in there and there's not, so that's that's kind of surprising. Let's see what the manual says. All right, so I just took a few minutes to read over this. Uh-oh, one moment. All right, I took a minute to read this over. There's not a lot of information, but basically, you plug it in, and you press either button, and it'll turn on. When it turns on, it'll go to 50 degrees C for six hours. You can adjust it. But that's where it's going to be for starting out. Again, like I said, not a lot of information available in there. So we've got... We've got these little... 
the rods. I guess they do have bearings in them after all. Not, they're not big and they, they don't spin freely. Which I don't know, that was kind of the thing about bearings. They should they should spin freely. I would really like to get this out of here. Yeah, here we go. You see the bearings there? Try to get this one out too. There we go. Now perhaps we can remove the heat sink. Have a look at what's happening down here, right? Because that's what we do. We take things apart. My dad used to hate it when I was a little kid and I'd take his tools apart. Well, did I know I was self-training for a career. But I think if you uh, are drawn to something like that as a young child, don't fight it. Okay. So there we can see the heater. You can see the power input down there. This is not going to come off up here because it's attached to the screen. Which makes sense. Alright, I think I got everything set up to test this out. I've got the remains of a roll of Great King Room PLA. Which I will stick in here. I guess the bearings aren't terrible. We'll close the lid. I got a thermocouple here. I was going to say, was I really hoping it would fit in there? And it does. Whoops. Tell you what, we'll switch that bung to the other hole. If that'll work, it should. That'll allow me to drop that in there like so. Then so it's got a lot of stuff here. Hard to see. So there's your kilowatt power supply just by itself drawn 16 milliamps. Plug it in. So it's 16, 17 milliamps. Hit one of the buttons. As you can see, it's turned on. It says PV21C. We're getting 19C there. And it is drawing uh, 691 milliamps. Or 100 milliwatts. So I will let it roll, and we'll see if it actually gets up to its what? What are the specs on this? 48 watts. Yeah, 48 watts. I'm drawing much right now. Maybe it's not active yet. Let's see. Operating instructions. Yeah, I guess it's working. There's that one's up to 26. It's starting to climb now. We're in 20 degrees C there. But it's sure as heck not pulling a... Oh, wait a minute. There we go. I'm on the wrong setting. 44.5 watts. Alright, so I'm going to let this heat for a while, and uh, we'll be back. Alright, we've been running for about four minutes now. 
you can see we're just about 43 watts. The, uh, the screen here is telling us we're at 36. What is this, set temperature? Okay. So it was telling us, well now it's telling us we're at 37 degrees. But we're only getting 26 here. So we're getting a 10 degree difference. But I'm sure they're reading that, that metallic heat sink down in there. Where I'm reading the ambient temperature in the box itself, so... I just want to see how long it's going to take to get to the 50 degrees C in there. All right, we're about eight minutes in. <clears throat> we're showing 45 degrees here on the unit and uh, 29 degrees here, 41.2 watts. So we're heading for about 130 or so degrees Fahrenheit to dry this thing out. And I'm wondering, what kind of fumes are we are we making with this? Like, there's very little fumes from the uh, 3D printer when we're printing with PLA, which is what polylac polylactic acid, a, a sugar-based plastic, which is what's in here. I would be concerned about using this for ABS because ABS is known to outgas some really toxic stuff. So. I'm I'm wondering I'm just wondering about the outgassing effect here, that's all. Up to forty seven degrees, forty watts, saying thirty-two. We're at about nine minutes. Now they're recommending you cook the filament for um six hours for the best results. From what I've understood, people are just using this for an hour or two before they print, and if they have a long print they're going for an hour or so into the print but I don't know I don't have the experience with that we're gonna find out though 48 degrees 33 so far is very well insulated I I don't feel any heat okay I feel heat in the back which is probably the closest place to the um, that heating strip. So all this is doing is heating that metal plate. This is um, we're ready to kick. Here we go. Fifty degrees in ten minutes and thirty seconds. That's not bad. You can see our temperature, our uh, power usage has dropped down. For fifty dollars, you could three D print this thing and put a uh, a metal plate in there. That's all it's doing. But it is supposedly useful for helping to keep your filament in good shape. So who am I to say anything without trying it? So that's what I'm going to do. <clears throat> we're going to try this out, and see if it makes any difference. Don't worry, we're not becoming the three D printing channel. This is just some uh, what I had going this week while I was out with the surgery. You can see our power's almost dropped down to nothing there because it's cut the heater off, but we're still cooking. We'll be back to our standard electronics fair next week, guys. All right, thanks for watching this. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. Huge thanks to Uncle Rob. That's it. I'm out. Peace.